Hello, good day. We're now learning page number 34 in Saita, Dafla Medalid, Ahmed Aleph, corresponding to the 33rd day of study of Saita. And we are uh, well into this uh, tractate, and we're still talking about various things connected to um, the Jewish people when they were coming into Israel. So we say, from where we left off, that the Koyanim, who carried the Aron, the, the Ark, when they crossed over the Jordan River, the Kavit Israel, with Joshua, with Yeshua, so it says that when the Koyanim put their feet into the Jordan River, so immediately the water started to stand up, and um, like a wall. How high did the water stand up? So the Gemara says it was 12 mile, twelve mil by 12 mil, which is really the size of the Jewish people when they encamped was 12 mil by 12 mil. This is what Rabbi Yehud is of the opinion. Rabbi Yehud, but Rabbi Shimer, Shimer, how yesterday was his day. Lad Bomer, he says that according to this, what moves easier and quicker, water or people? We would think water. So how could it be the time it takes the people to cross the Jordan River? That's how much water came up. It should have been much more water because it moves much quicker. It's much lighter. So he says on the contrary, he says the, the, the water started to stand up like heaps upon heaps all the while that the Jews were passing by until it stood at 300 miles high. And it was so high that everybody, all the kings from the east and the west, knew that the Jewish people had a miracle that the, the, the water held up and, and dried so they can walk uh, between it and it brought an incredible amount of uh, fear within the people and they became very weak-hearted and they had no more spirit to fight the Jewish people. And even we find that Rachav, who despised that Yeshua sent before they crossed the Jordan in Yericho, Rachav the harlot, and she told the, 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 the spies that Yeshua sent, that they heard her even earlier when Hashem dried up the sea, the, the Red Sea, that the Jewish people crossed from Egypt, how they heard then, and the same thing happened over here. What happened while the Jewish people were crossing over the Jordan? So Yeshua told them several things. One of the things he told them is, you should know Jewish people. You're crossing the Jordan River to conquer uh, Israel and to chase out the people who live there now. Um, and if you're ready to do that, good. If not, you and I are all going to drown right here. The water is going to just, no more. It's going to run again like water. We're going to drown us all. Another thing we sure told them they were in the Jordan. He said, everyone should take a stone on your shoulder, according to the tribes of the Jews. So they took 12 stones, which they put right there in the area where they crossed the Jordan as a sign of the miracle that happened over there. Then another thing he told them was, take another uh, stone, and these 12 stones that you take, you're going to carry with you and you're going to put it in the place we're going to sleep. Didn't, they didn't take it and put it wherever they slept, but actually with stones that where they engraved the Torah when they got the blessings and the curses from the Levites on Mount Abel and Mahar Grizim, and they put it in the middle and they moved it to Gilgal. So these were the stones that they took with them. And we tell something about the stone that was brought down, that how, how big were these stones? It said each stone was the measurement of 40 sa'ah, the, the measure of the 40 saw, which is the, really the size that a mikveh has to be. And we are told that a, a stone that you put on, that, that you carry, something you carry yourself, you put on your shoulder, is a third of what you can carry with someone else. So from here we see about the Jewish people that, 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 that despise, when they brought back from the fruit of the land, so it says that they carry these long sticks in, in, in twos. So what does it mean they carried in these long sticks? I know that there's two, because the, there were two people, one holding in the front, one holding the back of the stick on their shoulder. What does it mean in twos? So we're told that they carry two sets of, of sticks. How did it work? That it worked is that there were two people in the front, two people in the back, and a stick across which had fruits on it. Then there was, on the sides, two people, and their sticks were lower, they were holding... Uh, some fruits on it. So eight of them carried the, 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 the grapes. And then one carried a pomegranate and one carried a fig. And the reason that they carried these things was to show them how unusually large these uh, fruits are and to imagine the people that eat these fruits, how big they are, 
and how we have to be worried about trying to conquer them. Yeshua and Kal of Torah, the Tenth did not carry anything. One reason is because they were Yeshua would be the next leader, and Kalev would be Femen Kam's king, they were more uh, honored and respected, or because they didn't want to be part of the game that the spies were playing to bring back a bad report. So um, there's an argument uh, coming back to what we talked about at the beginning of this class today, that when they walked, how tall the, the, the water stood, because when it was flowing, then all of a sudden, with the coin behind the coin, it was standing up like a wall, it was 12 miles, but 12 miles, 300 miles high. She says, according to Rabbi Yehuda, they, they passed in the same formation that they encamped. So just like they encamped 12 miles, but 12 miles, they passed in that sort of uh, great width. So the wall stood up. While it was standing up, it was 12 miles, but 12 miles, exactly the way they passed. According to Rabbi Yehuda, said they went up to 300 amas. They actually, they went in a, in a straight line, one after the other. So the time it took to go through a straight line it, it went up much higher, 300 miles. That's uh, almost uh, 25 times higher. Um, another opinion is that both say that they passed 12 miles by 12 miles. They, 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 they moved across the Jordan River in the same way that they encamped the same formation. But one says that the water, uh, a person is, is lighter than water, so they can walk quicker than the water moves. Another one says that the water is lighter and it moves quicker than the, than the person. That's why he went up to 300 amma. Now here we go to what Moshe despised. The Moshe said... Send, uh, Hashem said to Moshe, send spies, send for yourself spies. Shri Shlakish says, Shlach Lecha, send to yourself. Uh, so what, Moshe is going to do something bad? But uh, Moshe, it says, Yitna Be'en Adava. Moshe said, I thought it's a good idea. I didn't know something bad will come from it. But Hashem warned him, don't send them, I don't think it's a good idea. And let them go spy out, scatter out the land. So Chia says, the Miraglim, their whole plan was to try to shame Israel in front of the eyes of all the Jewish people. Because they use the word for scout of Yachbru and it says somewhere else, the, the moon will be shamed um, and, and the sun will be shamed. So, so here we see that they, they try to shame Israel by bringing these unusual fruits and say, look at these fruits, who wants to live in that type of land? Then it brings down the names of all of the spies. So we're told that Rabbi Yitzhak said that it's known to us that every one of the spies, their, their names follow their, their actions. Meaning they all plan to rebel against Hashem and not follow His plan, and their names follow it. And he says, we don't know how to read any of the names except one, Sesur ben Michael. Sesur means that he broke the actions of Hashem that bring the Jewish people into Israel, and Michael, Michael comes to the word weak, he became weak. He was scared of the people living in Israel at that time. Rabbi Yechon says, we know another person one of the, uh, the spies, Nachvi, the son of Vavsi. Nachvi means that he uh, tried to hide Hashem's words that it would take the Jewish people to Israel. And Vavsi means that he stomped over all the characteristics of Hashem by denying that we can uh, make it into Israel. Then it says they came to the th- south and they came to Hebron, the spies. What do you mean, uh, and he came to Hebron? It doesn't say, and they came. Well, who's he? So Rabbi says that at that time, Kalib and Yifunah, Kalib and Yifunah, one of the two that ended up Come back with a good report. He left the spies, and he went to uh, Hebron to pray by the gravesite of uh, matriarchs and patriarchs. And he asked them, "Are my forefathers? Please um, beg forgiveness that I should not get caught up in the ideas that the other spies are trying to bring back bad news." Yeshua already Moshe prayed for him, but uh, but Kalev prayed for himself, as it says, "And my servant Kalev." He had a different spirit with him. And then it says, when they came, uh, when, when he came to Hebron, he saw Achiman, Sheh, Shei, Talmai, these were giants. So he says, Achimai, Achiman means he was the strongest of the giants. Sheh, means that he, uh, when he walked in the ground, he made like, uh, he was so heavy and big, he made like little uh, marks deep, uh, deep into the ground. And Talmai was that he made much deeper marks because of the, the, his weight. When he went, the ground sunk in even more. Or rather say, Achiman built the city Anat, Sheshe built the city Alash, and Talmud built the city of Talmud. You lead the Anak, these were the children of the giants. Why are they called giants? Anak also means that they, 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 whenever they walked, they, they created shade because they blocked the sun. That's how high they were. Hebron, and then it says, Hebron, the city was seven years built before Tzoyan. So Hebron is in Israel, Tzoyan is in uh, Egypt. So it says, how could it be that Hebron was built before Tzoyan? When Cham gave to his uh, children 
uh, inheritance of the land, he would have built for his oldest son before he built for his younger son. His oldest son, he gave Egypt, so why would he build Israel before? So we say it means that it was nicer, seven times nicer than Soyan, Hebron. And the truth is, Hebron is a, is, is, is a rocky piece of the land. Um, that's why they made it a burial place, because they can't really build, uh, make fields there. Um, and yet, the nicest part of Egypt, Egypt is the nicest, is the most fertile and beautiful greenery from all other lands. And in Egypt alone, Soyan is called the place where the, where, where the royalty was. So it says that Hebron, which was the worst of the land of Israel, was better than Soyan, which is the best of the land of the Egyptian. So Gemara says that Hebron was a very rocky type of land, but it, didn't, it doesn't say that then the 40 years of Shalom went to the king and he said um, he went to bring uh, sheep from Hebron and rams from uh, Moab. Now, if Hebron is a bad land, how could there be sheep? Who would be grazing this? Igmar said, that's exactly the reason. Because it's very uh, thin type of the soil and it breaks easily, it was a great place that only grass grew and that's what the sheep eat, grass. So therefore, it's the best place for it to happen. As, uh, as, and, and that's why we say that even the worst of Israel is better than the best of even Egypt, the nicest land. So here we finish our study today.